Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. It is good to be in your presence one more time. I thank God for all of you. Let us pray, God. We just glorify you and we thank you even now for all that you are doing, God. Bless this worship experience. Bless all of your children, God. We pray healing. We pray growth. We pray love, Heavenly Father. We pray resources. We pray peace of mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's have a great time in the Lord.
just thank uh, God this morning for the uh, opportunity to read to you uh, a few passages from his word. And I'm going to be reading John 14, 23 through 27, because I don't know about you, but in this world today, I need a, a comforter. Uh, I need peace. And so my peace comes from the Lord comes from Jesus Christ, and so I'm going to read, and hopefully this scripture today uh, uh, has something uh, for you. It says, John 14, 23, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. And I like this last verse. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Eternal Father, we come again we come in the spirit uh, of God. Lord, we come asking that you forgive us of our sins of omission and commission. Uh, Father, if we come before your presence, we come with a clean spirit. We come uh, uplifting, uplifting your holy name and giving you all honor and glory. God, we pray for each and every one that's participating in worship service this morning, that we may receive the word that, that will enrich us to understand and believe and to share your word to the unsaved. God, you're awesome, God. You everywhere at the same time. You tell us if we share your word, if we are planting a seed, and then once that seed germinates, God, it becomes a life. Uh, and so therefore, we are, uh, as a responsibility for walking in the spirit, uh, sharing the gospel uh, with one another, and not being ashamed of the gospel. Because Jesus said, if he's not lifted up, then he won't tell his father about us. So God, that, 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 uh, has a significant meaning to me as a personal relationship with him. That when we come, we come to worship in spirit and in truth. And we come now praying for our pastor. We pray that you continue to bless him and keep him. We pray that you continue to, uh, you know, God, sometimes we don't know what we've said when we're praying. And that's where the Holy Spirit knows exactly what we're trying to say. So I thank you for the Holy Spirit that being able to interpret some of the things that I may be trying to utter, but don't know what I'm trying to say. I just can't bring it out. So Father, we just want to say thank you. We pray for uh, all, the sick and the shed in. We pray for the bereaved. We pray for this world that we are living in. We pray that uh, so many of your uh, uh, creation is, is perishing. And so therefore that uh, Jesus came that we would have light and, 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 and we would come to the knowledge of your word, your truth, and, and worship you and share and, and, and do the things that you command us to do. We love one another, pray for one another, and visit those that's, that's, that's sick. So God, we just want to say thank you. If we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't thank you enough, Father. 
but we would just want to be in your will and not in our will, then we can do your will. That we would just remember that we all must stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give account for our deeds, whether good or bad. No one will escape the judgment seat of God. So now, Father, we just come now thanking you and blessing you and asking that you continue to watch over this body of believers and continue to just acknowledge us and admonish us to, to do your will and not our will. We ask thee blessing now in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
are your Connected in Christ announcements for the week. Activities this week. Tomorrow, Monday at 6.30 p.m., Deacon's Meeting on Zoom. Tuesday at 6.30 p.m., Faith Works Study Group on Zoom. Wednesday at 10.30 a.m., Bible Power Hour, no class. Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., Bible Happy Hour on Zoom. Tax Deadline Approaches The deadline to file 2021 tax returns is April 18, 2022. For those who have not received their stewardship donations report for 2021 or for those whose report needs to be corrected, please notify Deacon Robert Swindell by phone, text, or email. Deacon Swindell's phone number is 210-386-2701. His email address is rswindell at satx dot rr dot com. Please include your name, address, phone number, and email address. We intend to get your report into the mail within two weekdays of receipt of the request. Congratulations, Sister Autumn Galvan. Sister Autumn has signed an offer letter to become an operating room registered nurse RN at Stone Oak Methodist Hospital, San Antonio. Sister Autumn is graduating from Texas A&M University, Corpus Christi in May and will begin her employment in July. Thank you, Sister Autumn, for always putting God first, working hard academically. Also, congratulations, Mom, Sister Ina Stedman. God is good. MBGCT South Central Region Meeting The South Central Region of the Missionary Baptist General Convention of Texas will convene April 5th through the 7th, 2022, in San Antonio. The host church is New St. Mark Baptist Church, located at 1607 Brendel Street. The official opening session is Wednesday, April 6th, at 9.30 a.m. All auxiliary meetings will follow afterwards. Our own Deacon Durrell Patterson will be teaching the Brotherhood Auxiliary Session. For everyone's safety, masks are strongly recommended. Spiritual PPE. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Revelations 4, 11. New King James Version. These have been your announcements for the week. Let us govern ourselves accordingly. Yes, he is good. 
truth and spirit in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come together now to touch and agree, even virtually, knowing that where two or three are gathered together in your name, you are there in the midst, and we so desire your presence right now. Father God, we thank you for another day's awakening, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for things being as well as they are, even if they are not as we would like them to be. We just thank you for having your hand on us and your presence in our lives. We thank you for your continual blessings and the forgiveness of our sins, intentional or not. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to touch each person, each man, woman, boy, and girl, each situation, each circumstance, Father God, in the way that it needs. For you know, even before we, before it even happens, Father God, you know it, and you have in your control everything. And we trust in you. Help us to understand that our will is not always your will. And for us to be accepting, to be persevering, to, to maintain our faith, to have encouragement and endurance through anything, through anything that we may encounter. Keeping our eyes fixed firmly on the hills from whence our help comes, knowing that with only the faith of a mustard seed, everything will be all right. Father God, right now we ask your blessing and covering upon those who are in the hospital, those who are sick or shut in. Father God, place your hand, your healing touch on those who are in pain, ill, or in recovery, any type of recovery, physical, mental, financial. Father God, just touch in a way that they need to be touched. Watch over those who are about to undergo procedures or examinations, Father God. Uh, just give the doctors, the caregivers, uh, give them all the medical providers. Just bless them, Father God, and, and guide their hands, guide their instruments. For you provided them here to help us, but our trust is in you. Father God, we ask your encouragement and your, your strength for those who are discouraged, distressed, or afraid. Bless those in foreign lands, engulfed in warfare and, and, and strife and turmoil. Bless the women and children, Father God, the elderly, even, even the soldiers who, who face danger and difficult decisions and battles. Bless our armed forces that guard and protect us as, as we pray for an end to the savagery and the pointless loss of life that war brings. We offer that situation, Father God. We offer all situations, all. We offer this world and all its problems. We offer it all up to you. For, for you are the only answer. You are the only true solution. Some right now are in bereavement. We ask your comfort and peace upon them. And not only for those who have lost someone recently, but for anyone who still feels the grief, the pain, the loss, the loneliness that comes from losing a loved one. There is no time taken, Father God. We just ask you to, to keep them, keep them wrapped up and, and to, to, to keep them. Bless, Father God, just help them along the way. Help us to understand that you make no mistakes in any decision, even when it's beyond our comprehension, our understanding. We just ask you to, to watch over and to keep, Father God. Bless our pastor and his family, Father God. Strengthen him. Keep him strong, Father God, and, and keep Keep him to help lead us in the faith that you would have us go. 
and bless the preacher who brings the word today, Father God. Let someone, let some soul hear the clarion call and answer, Father God, or, or someone returns back home to salvation. And we just ask that you carry us all, Father God, and keep us, keep us all in your, in your, in your covering. And we ask all this, knowing that when we call on the name Jesus, everything that should be bound will be bound. And everything that should be loosed will be loosed. So we ask it all, Father God, and, and we pray for, for your light to shine on us, to keep us, and guide us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and ask it all. Amen. Joy, joy, joy.
God, we thank you today for reminding us, God, that this joy that you've given us, the world didn't give it and the world cannot take it away. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the voices that work so hard week in and week out to bless us through song, Lord, through ministry and voices and ministry and singing. Bless Sister uh, Ina and Sister Vicki, Heavenly Father, for providing leadership in those ministries. Now, God, as we enter into your word, we pray that you would bless your word. And we pray, oh, Heavenly Father, that it would prick our hearts in a positive way that we may want to do better in your sight and want to do more in your will, Heavenly Father, that is pleasing to you. Thank you for your word, God, and thank you for your people. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Our scripture today is found in Mark chapter 15. One verse, just verse 21, Mark chapter 15, verse 21, New King James Version says, Then they compelled a certain man, Simon, a Cyrenian, the father of Alexander and Rufus, as he was coming out of the country and passing by to bear his cross. Jesus having been marched from judgment hall to judgment hall uh, throughout the night and then beaten to try to appease the crowd, uh, Pilate having found no fault, but the crowd still calling for the blood and the life of Jesus. Uh, Pilate had did everything he could. Uh, Matthew 27, 26 lets us know Jesus was flogged, beaten with the Cat of nine tails. Mark 15, 15 also affirms Jesus was beaten. This cat of nine tails. But at, through all of that, he was still selected uh, by the crowd over Barabbas uh, to give his life. So Pilate sent him uh, to the cross at Golgotha's hill. And the Roman soldiers were escorting him. And now they are making this journey uh, toward Calvary. In John 19, 17, uh, lets us know that Jesus was carrying his own cross in this journey. It says, and he, bearing his cross, went out to a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha. It was obvious to the Roman soldiers that our Savior our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, in the flesh, could use a helping hand. Uh, the cross, so much to bear. Uh, symbolically, uh, they had no idea what was really going on. Jesus was uh, dealing with the weight of all mankind on his shoulders. Under the weight of the, and the burden and the pain that he had suffered all night and the weight of the wooden cross that he was carrying, he would fall down uh, time after time and, and uh, so weak. And they had no idea of the spiritual or the divine significance that was going on with our Lord and Jesus, with our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Uh, they only knew of a beaten and a battered man with a heavy burden. As we look at this text, we try to understand, okay, what what was Simon's contribution and how can that help us today? Uh, what can we glean from this small piece of information about Simon from Cyrene that could help us to live today in a way that's pleasing in God's sight? Well, as the soldiers were marching Jesus toward Calvary's mountain. There were many a people in the crowd uh, crying out, many a, many of uh, Jesus' own. Uh, but here is Simon, who was really minding his own business. He, he wasn't in the crowd. He, he wasn't 
a part of the mob. He, he was actually coming in from out of the country and he was making his way in uh, for the feast that year for he was of uh, Jewish, of a Jewish faith. And we'll look at that later. But interestingly, the, the beauty is uh, Simon was not a hater. He was not one of the haters, uh, not part of the crowd, not even one of the viewers that was curious about what was going on. He, he was just minding his own business. Oh, Lord. But with all of his suffering, as we look back at Jesus, with, with everything that he was going through, all of his pain, all of his moaning and groaning, not one of his own offered to help him or to encourage him in any way. And yet the, the Roman soldiers, when they saw Simon, the Bible says they compelled him to help Jesus. And that, that word compelled is a strong word almost an order, almost forceful, uh, depending on how you read it. It, uh, it was, you got to do this. And, and Simon uh, obeyed. Now, si Simon is from the African continent. Cyrene is on the African continent. It was a place put together, a town, a city put together by, by the Grecians. Uh, and and uh, it was organized. And there were synagogues there and other things there. Uh, showing that our faith was present. Simon's response is so important. Simon didn't ask what was going on. Simon didn't ask why me. Simon didn't try to choose uh, someone else to help him from the other side. Simon simply helped. Simon showed us how to respond to a call to serve. How, how would you have responded in that situation? Would you have doubt? Would you have fear? Would you have a measure of confusion? Would you ask for help to help the one that needed help? One of my struggles with this text is why did Jesus need or accept help? You see in Matthew 26, 52 through 54, it says, but Jesus said to him there in the garden, He's talking to Peter, put, put your sword in his place for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot pray to my father and he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels? How then could the scriptures be fulfilled that it must happen thus or that it must happen like this? Yes, Jesus could have prayed to the Father and gotten all of the things that he needed, including someone to carry the cross. So, so why would Jesus even need help in this situation? That was one of those things that made me go, hmm. And when I analyzed it, when I prayed over it, when I meditated, what came into my spirit is that this is the great display of humility. The one who bears all burdens uh, of mankind accepts assistance with his burden. Yes, he's carrying this cross in the physical while he's carrying the weight of the world in the spiritual. With humility, Simon helps the Savior with his burden. So the message from Simon is, when you're called to serve, just do it. Are we humble enough, my brothers and sisters, to answer the call to serve? What a powerful message Simon gives us just by responding to the command of the Romans who had no authority over him, who had no relationship with him, who had no faith with him, yet he responds to their request because there's a measure of humility in his heart and there's a measure of compassion in his, in his heart while everyone else is crying out and fussing and wild and angry and, and spewing and fuming. He helps the very one that they're angry at. In a sense, he almost puts his life on the line for Jesus. 
because the crowd could have very easily attacked him for helping Jesus, the one who they simply wanted to suffer the worst way and to die. Saint Simon, Simon came through with what he needed. Simon showed us how to respond to the call to serve. And trust me, God can use anybody to call you to serve. So often we look for the Lord to say something directly, but he may use someone else that may not even be saved to call you into the service that he has for you. And in this case, he uses the Roman soldiers to call Simon into service for his purpose. He is literally gonna help the Lord die for your sins and my sins. What a service that is. Not only did Simon respond properly to the call, but Simon shared respect with his children. He raised his children right. He trained up a child in the way that they should go. And when they got old, they did not depart from it. Simon Efforts uh, is a small validating detail that sheds light on the awesomeness of God in our lives. Uh, first here, we see that Simon's name is mentioned. E even in Luke, even in Luke, Simon's name is mentioned. How often have you read in Luke where it says a certain man or a certain woman. But here it says a certain man named Simon, a certain Cyrenian named Simon, who is the father of Alexander and Rufus. Yes, his children are identified, his sons at least, two of them are identified. What does that do for us? It lets us know that, that they were familiar uh, to the audience of the gospel writers. Yeah, these boys, Alexander and Rufus, were like-minded believers. They were brothers in Christ, amen, to those that the gospel speakers were sharing with. It lets us know, it lets us know that these brothers were part of the body of believers. And that's crucial. These are the sons of the very man who helped Christ. Acts 6 identifies the synagogue in Cyrene. That was one of the places that stirred up the trouble with, with Stephen. But it lets us know that at least there were faithful people there. And there, not only were the synagogues, but the church was being established and there were believers like you and I, the same Christ that you and I believe in, Simon believed in, the same Christ that you and I believe in, Alexander believes in, the same Christ that Rufus believes in. Alec, amen, you and I believe in. Thank you, Simon. Thank you for showing us that when we raise our children right, it may be a small sentence in a big book, but it'll make a difference. You're showing us how we must go beyond right and wrong with our children. We cannot just teach our children, my brothers and sisters, right and wrong, but we must teach them humility. We must teach them compassion. We must teach them all of the attributes of God that they may know how to love one another. Amen. And how to love others. Amen. Thank you, Simon, for illustrating the type of faith that our children can emulate. Our children see the sermon in our lives. Or are we showing them the faith, amen, that is the size of a mustard seed? Are we panicking when we fall in trouble and our children witness it? Or are we saying, hey, don't you worry because I'm not worried. I trust in God. And of all the things, when it comes to our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, R-E-S-P-E-C-T is crucial. And so when we respect God, then our children can see and remember and respect God likewise. That, that is crucial, my brothers and sisters. That is so, so very important. Yes, Simon shared respect with his children. Simon shared how to respond to the call to serve. And, and finally, Simon shows that serving the Lord will pay off. And can I just add this in extra? It's not always after a while. 
Sometimes it's right then. Now what Sir Simon did is still paying off. Can I tell you, Simon is blessed because he helped Christ. His children are blessed because he helped Christ. His name is in the Holy Writ that we study and, li and live by on a daily basis. His name is in the Holy Writ that Ezekiel said we ought to eat. His name is in the Holy Writ that we ought to live by while we are on this earth. His name is in the Holy Writ. God knows what he's doing. He gives us a small glimpse of Simon, a small glimpse of Alexander, a small glimpse of Rufus. And he says, that's all you need to be fully developed, amen, to know how to deal with a call to serve. That's all you need to know how to respond to a call to serve in a way that it will impact your children. That's all you need to know that the Lord will bless you for your service. Well done, thy good and faithful servant is not always at the end. You get some well dones on your journey. You get some blessings on your journey. You get some paydays on your journey. Hallelujah. Thank God that we don't have to wait for one payday. Yes, there's going to be a big payday, but that's not the only payday. God is blessing us right now. He had a close encounter with Jesus because he was obedient, because he was willing to serve. He had an intimate encounter with our Lord and Savior, closer than anyone in the crowd who was ridiculing Jesus. There he is walking step and step with Jesus as Jesus is suffering carrying the burdens of this world. The least we can do if he's carrying the burdens of our soul is we carry the burdens of the cross. He says, take my yoke. My, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. You just need to carry a piece of wood and I will carry your soul. Mm. Simon gives his best effort. There's nothing in here that he denied anything or he quit, he ran off. He just did what he needed to do. And he did not complain along the way. Thank God for Simon who gives us the type of illustration of what it means to love God and to live right through our actions. We show our love. Thank you, Simon, for showing us how to live. His help allowed Jesus to make it to Calvary. Oh, hallelujah. And y'all know what happened on Calvary. Jesus opened the gates of heaven through his death through his burial, through his resurrection. There was no true access until Jesus paid the ultimate price. He says, I am the door. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Thank God that he went to Calvary. He made it because of the efforts of a brother named Simon. Thank you, Simon, for being willing to serve. Thank you, Simon, for being available to serve. And thank you, Simon, for serving. It's one thing to be willing. It's another to be available. But it takes a whole nother game to be a part of the service. Thank you, Simon, for helping our Lord and Savior, to one of the most painful moments of his earthly life. Yet today we get to enjoy the presence of the Holy Spirit because Simon helped Jesus to Calvary. Calvary was not the end of neither of their stories. Calvary was not the conclusion of any matter. Jesus lives on in eternity. And as we look in the book, if you have no doubt, you can read about Simon today. How many names are not spoken in the book? But Simon's is, and not only he, his children are. So my brothers and my sisters, I encourage you today to live a life that's pleasing to God. Live a life where you love one another. Live a life where you, amen, show your love by your faith walk. Live a life where you are willing to help those who need a helping hand. Live a life where you're not sitting in judgment, but you're sitting in fellowship. Live a life where you have an expectation that things may change in the matter of a moment. He was minding his own business, headed his own way, but the Lord redirected his path. 
and he didn't do it through the saved. He did it through the unsaved. But you got to be listening to the voice of God because the voice of God can speak through anyone. And thanks be to God that he's speaking to his children today. He says, my children know my voice. Hallelujah. We know the voice of God. Because we know the voice of God, we know how to follow him. No matter who gives the order. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for Simon. And greater, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for all that you have shared on this day. May you bless us with your presence on tomorrow, in the future, Lord, every day that we face. 